welcome back to What Are Nibs, 5th General Disturbance. This is a very rare tank, it's a tier 3 premium tank. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's a BTSV. It's a Soviet tier 3 light. And well, it's a very fast little tank, will do 62 kilometers an hour. Now what makes this tank so special? Well, it's probably that sloped armor. It's really, really fast. In fact, this tank is one of the Progenitors of the T-34, you might say. The sloped armor came from the BT tanks, the Bustara tank, which means fast tank in Russian. And well, those are the tanks that they managed to obtain from Mr. Christie, the American designer who came up with the new suspension system. Well, this tank has a 45 millimeter gun, which is capable of 47 alpha penetrating 51 millimeters of armor, but it's incredibly quick. And very rare as well. He's been spotted, so you'll have to get back. Yeah, just bounced around from the Panzer 3E. And that just shows how good this armor is. The armor slopes so much that the rounds just literally bounce off the armor. And that's got what gave them the idea for the T-34. They sloped the armor on the T-34 and watched the rounds just ricochet off them. Yeah, he's getting rounds into those tanks. Nicely done. Yep, Panzer 1C is not going to survive much longer, and he's gone. Okay, we've got that Panzer 3. That's the one that fired on us. And he's taking damage. Panzer 3E there as well. Now, this tank has preferential matchmaking, which means you'll never see a Tier 5 tank in this uh, little BTSV. But it's got, as I said, it's got incredible speed. And so it's famous for doing drive-by kills on the enemy because they have tremendous difficulty trying to take it down. And it can zoom past the enemy at high speed, shooting them as it goes, and then disappear into the distance. Well, he got a shot there, I think, on, uh, on one of the enemy tanks, but it was at the T-29 or the uh, Panzer III. I think it may have been one of the Panzer three E's or an M2 medium. Well, our T29 is going up to see what their one's doing. Oh, he's found him. Yeah, he just got hit. And you notice the way that um, Mr. Lan has actually positioned his vehicle so he can make a fast getaway. He's pointing with his rear to the enemy and he's decided to move away. M2 medium pops up, so he's got somebody to spot for him, and he gets a nice round into the T29. T29 goes down to the M2 medium with a derp. Again, showing his rear so he can quickly run away if he needs to. Fires one into the M2 medium, but our M2 medium finishes him off, which is good. So there's still those two Panzer 3Es somewhere in the distance. We've only got five left on our team and we're facing seven of the enemy. Panzer 1C in the cap area. And this is where the BTSV really comes into its own because, as I say, it bounce the rounds from the enemy off the plates, which are angled at just the right angle to throw those shells away, to bounce them off. Now, it's only been on sale a few times in the gift shop. In fact, it's very rare to actually see it on sale. And this time, Mr. Lan got his on the black market. Yes, when they held the black market just recently, the BTSV was one of the tanks they had up. And I think a lot of people like to get hold of one of these. And we got one into the Panzer 3E. Go for the other one. Didn't get that one in. He's getting those shots in. He's coming down, going after them, chasing them. He's got the speed, you see. And he takes that one out. Now, can he get this Panzer 3E here? He's coming for him. Gets one in. Panzer 3E misses him because he's too quick for him. Gets another one in. Goes for it again. He's dealing with two enemies simultaneously. Panzer 1C bouncing rounds off his hull. Yeah, not going to work. He's got angled hull, mate. And the Panzer 1C is going to go down. Yep, there you go. He's dealt with him. But he's the last one left alive. And I think it was the last one left alive when I think there was six enemy tanks. So he's on for a Kolobanov if he can survive this battle. Oh, was spotted again. Don't know who he was spotted by there. It's 
T70 coming up from the south. There he is, he's coming up by the middle. There's also an M1542 there. He's using the APCR now to make sure his shots count. He needs to make sure he wins this one. Gets those in. Oh, gun depression is a bit of a problem, but he takes out the M15. Now he's dealing with the T17. Two in. Gets the kill. That means there's only two enemies left. Standing between him and Kolobanov. He's got his top gun. He can't get a Radley's, unfortunately, because this is tier three. In fact, it's a tier... Yes, it is a tier three battle. You say he can only see tier four. He can't see tier five. He's actually low on hit points now because there's some of them guys did get shots into him. The T-70 did and the medium three did. Okay, he's staying, taking up a defensive position. He's only facing the medium three and the AMX-38. Now, the AMX-38 is going to be the big problem because, of course, he's the French tank with lots of armor. Medium three is fairly porous. It's uh, got weak armor. But he's only got five rounds of APCR left and he doesn't know which direction they're going to come from. He's hedging his bets. He thinks that it's, they're going to come from that direction. I'm taking control of the camera because he's doing the zoom, zoom in, zoom out thing as uh, some of the top players tend to do. Yeah, you see like that. <laughs> so if I take control of the camera, I'll switch it back as soon as the enemy does turn up. Looking in this direction is probably the smartest move to make because if the enemy comes in the other direction, he'll get enough warning and he'll be able to switch the aim around. Ah, the medium's been spotted. There he is. He's auto-aimed on. Or has he? Yes, he has. One in. Two. Oh, he's not. He's manually aiming this. Kill shot. Oh, no. He didn't get it. And he's now on standard ammo. Or is he? No, he actually went to standard ammo straight away. Sorry, my mistake. He did the right thing there because the medium doesn't need APCR. You only need standard AP for this because the armor is so weak. He's just going to go straight through. So the AP has got penetration of uh, 51 millimeters. There's the AMX. He's going to go down the wall. Oh, almost flips. But there's the medium three. He takes him out with one shot. Comes up behind him. He didn't expect that to happen. And now, well, he's loaded the APCR. And I think what he's going to do is he's going to rush down to the other end. Oh, the a AMX is capping. Okay, now, what's he need to do? He could go to the middle and switch over to the middle of the map and then shoot at the AMX from the Abbey. So if he goes up the this, this area here turns to the right, drops down into the middle, that's it, just heal dude, nicely does it, slowly, don't want to lose any hit points, you're low on hit points as it is, okay still got time, you can get a defender medal off it as well, is he going to change direction, oh he's, no he had a thought about it, no he is going to do it, he's going to go up this way, Hoping that the AMX-38 won't see him. I think he also might have been concerned that he didn't have enough time left. So the AMX is going to be looking towards the east to the river. And of course um, he's going to approach it from a different angle. Oh, now did the AMX see him? Yes, I think he did. He's hiding behind the wreck. That one didn't go through. Rich ricochet... Yeah, he's having difficulty with those shots. He's used up two of his APCR rounds. Hmm. 
Now, the other thing in his favour, actually, is he can get resets. And in doing that, then he's obviously going to get a defender. If he can get enough resets. Okay, he's going to go around the other side. He could reload uh, or load some HE to do the reset. Okay, now the AMX thinks he's going to come up via the, the east, the west side this time. But he's actually coming up from the centre again. He's staying with the APCR. Oh, he's going to be sneaky. He's going to come in from the riverside. Even sneakier. He's actually going in. Oh, he was seen. But he gets the reset. So he's guaranteed a defender. Oh, but he almost flipped it there. In fact, I think he's stuck for a second. <laughs> Be careful. Well, he's got the, the cover of the trees now, so the AMX can't see him, but he will see the AMX. Okay, there you go. He's angled the AMX. He knows what to do. He's going for the turret. Gets one in. Two. That's the last of his APCRs. Now, can he get the penetrations with the standard AP? I don't think so. So it's going to have to do it with standard AP. Go for the turret. He's got the side of the turret. Yes, he gets it. And he wins. That's a Kolobanov. My gum. Very few APCR rounds, but he wins with the BTSV, the Booster Tank SV. Now, let's have a look at the end of battle stats. It's the nice tanker for Mr. Lan in the BTSV. He managed to get a hand of gold for surviving the battle, having received damage from four different enemy tanks, a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got six in that one. Um, he got a duelist, fire for effect, and a shell proof um, off the minor medals. He got the Collar Banoff medal, the medal everyone would like to get for standing alone against at least five of the enemy. I think it was six of the enemy at one point because uh, his last teammate died while he was still fighting two tanks at the same time. He got a defender medal for resetting the cap, getting at least 70 defense points, high caliber for dealing the most damage in the battle, and a top gun for getting at least six kills. He actually got eight, but you cannot get a Radley's at tier three, unfortunately. Let's have a look at team score. Highest damage in the game, 1,631 hit points of damage. The next high score was the Panzer III Aus E on the enemy team with 704, and then the other one with 590. Uh, when it came to kills, it was Mr. Lamb with 8 kills. Next highest was the Panzer III E with 3. And when it came to base XP, he managed to get 1,260 base experience points. He's the only player who managed to get over 1,000. Let's have a look at detail. 64 shots fired, 50 direct hits, 40 penetrations, damage of 1,631 hit points, of which 288 were at more than 300 meters. He did receive 25 hits from the enemy. Only nine of them were penetrations due to that sloped armor. 16 non-penetrations, 283 hit points of damage blocked by armor. One enemy vehicle spotted, 11 enemy vehicles damaged, 8 killed, and 100 defense points. Yes, he reset the cap enough times to get the full 100. On a free-to-play account, he earned 25,465 credits, got 12,733 from personal reserves, so his total of 38,198. But he did fire a fair amount of APCR during that game. And he used up consumables as well. So he actually made a small loss for the game of 18,651 credits. But I don't think he'll worry about that because he did win the game and get a collar ban off. 1,260 XP times two for the first victory. 630 from personal reserves. 756 from this being a premium vehicle. Took away 3,906 experience points altogether. So the BTSV, very rare tank. You won't see it all that often. And it's actually quite an interesting tank because... It was the way they angled the armor on this tank led to the angling on the T-34. In fact, actually, the angling on this version then led to the A-20, which is why there's some similarities between this tank and that uh, tank. And uh, yes, then it led to the T-34 and then all the other Russian tanks, which have highly sloped armor afterwards. They all come basically from the BTSV. 
So uh, yes, this is the genesis, you might say, of all the Russian sloped armor, and it worked very efficiently, as you saw in that battle. If you really enjoyed this replay, please give this video a like, and if you did, um, please subscribe to our channel, and um, thanks for watching.